Tech in 5. Python in practice, master real-world projects in 5 minutes. Dive into k-means clustering in our unsupervised learning tutorial. Let's begin. Welcome to our tutorial on unsupervised learning, with a focus on clustering, one of the most intuitive yet powerful techniques in data science. Today, we're diving into k-means clustering, a popular method used to group data into clusters based on their similarities. Unsupervised learning is a type of machine learning where algorithms infer patterns from unlabeled data. One of the most common unsupervised learning techniques is clustering. Clustering groups data points into subsets or clusters, such that points in the same cluster are similar to each other, but different from those in other clusters. This technique is incredibly useful for discovering hidden patterns in data, segmenting datasets, and even for data reduction. K-means clustering is a straightforward yet powerful algorithm in unsupervised learning. Here's how it works. K-means aims to partition a set of points into K clusters. It starts by randomly initializing K points, called centroids, each representing the center of a cluster. The algorithm then assigns each data point to the nearest centroid, and the centroids are recalculated as the center of the points assigned to them. This process repeats until the centroids no longer move significantly, indicating that the clusters are as good as they can be. This method is efficient for a wide range of data analysis tasks, making it a cornerstone of unsupervised learning. Now, let's set up k-means clustering with scikit-learn, which provides an efficient implementation of this popular algorithm. We'll use a simple synthetic dataset for this example to clearly see how k-means groups the data into clusters. First, we need to import the necessary libraries. We'll need k-means from scikit-learn's cluster module and some utilities to create and visualize our dataset. We'll generate a synthetic dataset with easily distinguishable clusters to see how effectively k-means can identify these groupings. Now, we configure the k-means algorithm. The key parameter here is n clusters, which defines the number of clusters k-means should form. We also set random state for reproducibility. Next, we fit the model to the data. K-means will try to find cluster centers that minimize the variance of points within each cluster. After configuring and fitting our k-means model, it's important to analyze the results to understand how effectively the algorithm has partitioned our data into clusters. The labels attribute of our k-means model tells us the cluster each data point belongs to, while the cluster centers attribute gives us the coordinates of each cluster's centroid. Visualizing our clusters can provide intuitive insights into the data that aren't always obvious just from the numbers. We'll enhance our previous plot by adding more details to help interpret the clusters better. This includes labeling the cluster centers and possibly using different markers or colors to emphasize points that are central to a cluster. In this visualization of k-means clustering, we observe four distinct clusters, each marked with a red X representing the centroid. Each color, green, yellow, purple, and blue, denotes a separate cluster. The clusters appear well separated with minimal overlap, suggesting that k-means has effectively distinguished between different groups in our dataset. This is indicative of a good fit for the model to our synthetic data. Notice data points proximity to their centroids, indicating low intra-cluster variance. This desirable clustering attribute means members within a cluster are more similar to each other than to members of other clusters. The yellow and purple clusters are more compact, indicating higher density, whereas the green and blue clusters show a slightly more spread out distribution. This variance in density and spread can be informative. For example, it might suggest different levels of consistency within groups in real-world data. As we wrap up, we've seen how k-means clustering effectively groups data into distinct clusters, providing clear insights into underlying patterns. There are many more complex clustering techniques out there, like hierarchical clustering and dbscan, which can handle varied data shapes and densities. Today's exploration is just the beginning. I encourage you to dive deeper into these methods to uncover even more about your data. Keep learning and happy coding! Stay tuned for more videos on Tech in 5.